You were in the Georgia Dome. You're playing a Division I team. We're not supposed to win. We were just supposed to show up and get beat. They were supposed to have us in hand. They were faster than us, stronger than us. But one thing I think that we had, we was just, we were more willing to win than they were. I don't think Georgia State knew what hit them. On a rainy November afternoon in Joliet, the Fighting Saints prepare for one of the biggest games in the University of St. Francis football program's 26-year history. In two days, the NAI number 16 ranked Saints will take on the NCAA Division I Georgia State University Panthers. Now, just hours before they will depart on the 12-hour trek to Atlanta, the team meets for one final practice at Joliet Memorial Stadium. Now it's almost three o'clock. What I want to do is get out there all right, and get our stuff ran through as fast as we can. We're going to shorten practice because of the, the, the conditions, but we have to get out there and get something done, okay? So you never know, it might be raining Saturday. You get it? No, some of you guys didn't get that, I don't think. All right, so let's get out there. Let's get through these plays on air and have a good practice. Let's go. At 9 p.m., the Saints gather at USF outside the Sullivan Center. Excitement builds as the players, coaches, and trainers load up their gear and board the two buses that will make the overnight journey to Atlanta. Off to Georgia. As far as the trip goes, you know, we, because it's a Division I opponent, um, they do get, pay you a guarantee. So we kind of had the option of flying our, our travel team down there, which is usually about 60 student athletes and coaches and trainers, about 80 people. Or we could take the money that was given to us and drive the entire team down there, which uh, we did. Our seniors and captains decided that they would like everybody to experience the trip. After a long night on the road, the team has finally arrived in northern Georgia. Despite driving over 10 hours with only two stops, the team is no worse for the wear. Lack of sleep, uncomfortable seats, it's all just part of the experience. We left at uh, 9 o'clock yesterday, man. It hasn't been too bad. Um, yeah, actually, yeah, we've been sleeping back here. We slept on the floor, so it's not too bad on the floor. But it could be better. Bus ride's been long, uncomfortable, but... Almost there, almost, uh, yeah, almost to the stadium, so. Around 9 a.m., the Saints get a chance to stretch their legs and enjoy breakfast. And even better, a break from the bus. Energized, the Saints hit the road again for the final leg of the trip. As they near the Georgia Dome, anticipation mounts. Getting more excited the closer we get, especially when we get to uh, go, go there and get ready for the game. Uh, that's going to be an exciting part. Georgia Dome, kind of like a dream yeah, come true yeah, for a lot of people, especially us in NAI. Kind of, <laughs> it's going to be fun. 
Uh, it's something that we're, I just talked to him, like I said, uh, seeing that we're kind of close, I'm kind of feeling, you know, kind of a little, you know. <laughs> For more than 20 members of the team, the trip provides an even more special opportunity. For those players who hail from the South, it will be the first time many of their family and friends will be in the stands to see them play in a college football game. We got all my family and friends coming, probably about 50 people total. Coming up through high school, you know, being up, having them there every game, you know, coming from now, you know, that I'm 18 hours away, they can't come to games, so this is like kind of like a special feeling, you know, I actually get to play in front of them, you know, for the first time in this long, so since high school, you know, like this is my third year in college, so it's going to be a show, I have to give them a show, you know, I can't let them come this far, you know, not have nothing to watch. So. And now that the Saints have finally made it to Atlanta, the show is about to begin. Now in the heart of the city at the 73-story Weston Peachtree Plaza Hotel, the team will get a chance to settle in and rest before it's time to get down to business. In a few short hours, they'll load onto the buses again to take their first look at the Georgia Dome, home to the NFL's Atlanta Falcons, and the battlefield for tomorrow's showdown, USF versus Georgia State. That's where buses go. Yeah, that's where the buses go. Well, I believe. <laughs> Just 24 hours and more than 700 miles after practicing on their home turf, the Saints are ready to take on the Georgia Dome. Oh, I mean, when we first walked in the Georgia Dome in pregame, I don't know, I think Friday it was, it was just awesome. We were just like, oh my gosh, we're playing here. We're, you know, we're in the home locker room, Falcons. It was just a great experience, and it just builds so much anticipation. You get so excited to play a game like that in such a great venue, such such a big time team. So. Come on, go crazy. Right there. Woo Dang, balls! What? This is amazing. I'm so happy. Come on, D. Give me back the I'm not going to get you, bro. He got you. Hey, <laughs> oh, 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 Look at this. This is amazing. I'm happy. I'm traveling. Who you with? Everybody know who Jane Bowie is. Five, five. Right here in Georgia, dog. What you going to do to man? Oh, they don't, they ain't even ready. They ain't even ready. They ain't even ready. Ready for tomorrow? They ain't even ready. Let's get it. Let's get it. Y'all beat Georgia State. And that's how it is. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. Thing I want to do is review our assignments, okay, and also get you guys running around a little bit. You did drive 12 hours on a bus. Most of you didn't sleep a ton, I know. You got a chance to take pictures, do all that other shit, okay? I want you guys focused. You understand that? You're sure. here to play a football game. I gave you 25 minutes to get all that crap out of the way, all right? From here on out, it's a freaking normal ass football field. We got 11 guys out there, they got 11 guys. There ain't nothing different. Yeah, that's the one we talked about, right, Elliot? Good. Ready, 
Okay, right hash. After getting a lay of the land in one final practice, the team heads to dinner. There, the players allow the day's events to sink in and reflect on what it was like to step onto an NFL field for the first time. Walked in there and it was just, it was huge, it was awesome, and it was just going through the tunnel. It was so weird to know the Falcons play there. So just being able to come out like a professional athlete, like out of the tunnel, it was like, it was awestruck. I was actually like looking forward. I wasn't as excited as I thought I was going to be until I walked out there and like started looking around and kind of wanted that Falcon symbol to be right in the middle. That would have been pretty cool. But regardless, it was really cool. I um, really didn't aim until I walked out on the field. I just looked up and I was just like wide eyes, shocked. So, it was really cool just to be on the field. Oh man, it was it was crazy. It was really crazy to know that like Super Bowl has been played there. Prime time, Deion Sanders played there. All these greats, man. I'm in there walking like, man, I'm prime time junior. I think I'm getting it in, even though I'm playing. But that's a whole nother story. <laughs> well, it was a good feeling to um, had the opportunity to play where you know professional players play. Something different from like going from my regular home games in Joliet. So something new, good enjoyment. Um, I mean, kind of like what they said. It's just new experience, just big venue. I mean. But kind of like Gord said, the field's no different than anything we played on, just bigger stadium. But the team doesn't let the glitz and glamour of the Dome intimidate them or cause them to lose focus. They came to do a job and know how to get it done. I'm excited. Um, they're definitely beatable on film. Um, we'll see tomorrow, though. Um, hopefully we get a win out of it. We will go there and get a W. A game is a game. It doesn't matter who they are. So hopefully we go in there and play like we can ready to play. I mean, we know our capabilities. We feel confident in how well we'll do. Well, I'm excited. Uh, they're a very good football team, but we're pretty good too, and it's really going to come down to who's the best fundamentally and who doesn't turn it over. And that, that's what hurt us last week was the turnover. So our goal is to get it to halftime, because I think if we get it to halftime, the pressure kind of shifts to them, because they're supposed to win, we're not. So if we can get to half and keep it a game, I like our chances. Nine thirty a.m. Saturday morning. It's game day. The Saints gather for one final meal on the morning of this epic day in USF football history. A police escort joins the buses on their way to the stadium, as all thoughts are focused on the game. This is it, the chance for underdog USF to take the stage and prove to the nation who they really are. As the team gets ready inside, Saint fans from across the country begin to gather outside the stadium, eager to cheer their team on to victory. Go Saints! Woo! Go Saints! Back inside, the team is in game mode with one goal in mind.
coming at them. Keep coming at them. Because you know they're thinking it's going to be a two, their mindset right now is going to be a two quarter football game, is it not? And we've all been in those games on the other side of it where you think you're going to play two quarters and you sit down at half and like, oh shit, we could lose this. When this game was invented, there wasn't fans in the stands, there wasn't cheerleaders, there wasn't bands, there was none of that shit. A bunch of guys from one college would get together, they go to another college, and they'd fight their ass off to see who was the most physical group, who had the tougher team. Then they'd do it again the next week. That's all this is today. It's you guys going to be the most physical group you can be. Um, we had just came off a loss to um, Grandview, a team that we felt like we should have beat. And, um, we pretty much went to the game with a chip on our shoulder and it felt like if we won that game, we'd show everybody in the nation who, you know, what kind of team we really were. I think everyone was just really excited to get out there. Everyone just wanted to prove and just show, you know, what St. Francis was about. I mean, I don't think Georgia State knew what hit them. Uh, everyone was just like, let's go. We're sick of waiting in here, watching TV, you know, games on the TVs and locker rooms. I mean, we just want to get out and play. You can be, let's go get after them physically right let's now. Go. Let's go! Let's go! And we welcome you to a historic day in University of St. Francis football history. Dave Bernhardt along with Dave Laquetta coming to you live from the Georgia Dome here in Atlanta, Georgia as your 7-2 16th ranked Fighting Saints take on the NCAA Division I Georgia State Panthers. Short kickoff comes to the 40-yard line. It will be good field position up to the 46-yard line. The return that time by Mark Hogan. So the defensive unit for the Saints will come on to the field. And Line of scrimmage is a 22, they'll go play action. Over the middle they go, looking for a man in the end zone. They have him, touchdown, Danny Williams. 22-yard pass from Kelton Hill. Georgia State strikes early. Hey, we're all right. Hey, you guys almost had him before down, huh? I'm still. I know, you're right, no, let's go. Next play, next play, one and up. It's really a part of mis miscommunication. Um, if we did that against anybody before we played Georgia State, they would have scored. We just had a um, miscommunication in the second day, and we knew that it would be okay because we knew that after playing the first snap that we can play with them and that that wouldn't happen again. So just, just knowing by that, we was like, we were straight. Don't worry about it. We all right. We got it. Well, that, I mean, our defense is, I mean, they've, most teams have scored on their opening drive. Not they, the defense has stopped after that. I mean, they got to get into the groove. I know we're like a second half team. So, I mean, we always give up maybe a touchdown or two early. We don't score early. And then, I mean, it's just the same football. I don't know why, but that's just how we do it. And uh, I mean, the first five minutes was, I guess you could say, same football. We down seven, nothing, had to come back quick. But it's, it's, not, it's not that bad, nothing we're not used to. Hill chased out of the pocket. Now Hill reverse, comes here to the near right side. Still in the run, looking downfield. He'll throw it down the right sideline. Into the traffic and it's intercepted. Jesse Gruber will pick it off for the Saints near midfield. And that might be the Jesse Gruber contingent across the way at about the 50 yard line because there are about 30 people right in that vicinity that just got up after Jesse Gruber uh, made that interception. I know his father had a big contingent coming down here, and now they're going to call a penalty on St. Francis. Feeding off the momentum of Jesse Gruber's interception, the Saints find their stride. Late in the first quarter, the Saints begin to mount a successful drive into GSU territory to get within field goal range. 
Let's go. Let's go. Murray this year just two of three, only attempted three field goals. This will be a 24-yard kick from the left hatch. Ball is spotted down. The kick is up, and it is good. And the Saints cap an 11-play drive, covered 61 yards, and they get three out of it. With 14-15 to go here in the second quarter, it's Georgia State 7, your Fighting Saints 3. We'll take a break. Be back in 60 seconds. You're listening to Fighting Saints football on WCSF. With their first points on the board in the Georgia Dome, the Saints are pumped up and ready to show Georgia State what they're made of. White to the left side. Has it complete the 40-yard line. Look out. Had to move his deck pitch. He's going. To the 15. Angles to the right side. 10, 5, Page. Down. He's down. Dance Page. A great throw from White. A better run for Page. A 60-yard catch and score and the Saints have taken the lead. Well we talked about the skilled players that St. Francis has and one of those top skilled players is Des Page and he just put on a show right there. He was wide open around the 30 yard line uh, of Georgia State then saw an opening inside cut inside and then continued to cut across the grain for the touchdown. G.A. Hill now will go deep into the end zone, wide open touchdown. And the Saints will go into the half, trailing 17 to 10. Well, Mikey Rimovich said before the ball game, he said, we, you know, we want to be in the game in the first half. He didn't want to get pushed around by the big offensive and defensive lines for Georgia State. And as these teams leave the field, it's been mission accomplished for Yumrimovich. And remember, the first quarter played without numerous starters doing to sit out for a quarter due to a violation of some team rules, and yet they trail just 17-10. Within one touchdown at halftime, the Saints are feeling confident in their ability to beat Georgia State. Okay, stay after them. Keep doing your job and do your job. Nobody else is. St. Francis. Man, this is where we'll find out who the more physical team is. We know we're evenly matched. The most physical team will win the game. Let's go. Let's, let's go. go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Um, we knew we were in the game, and I mean, regardless of what the score was, the morale was not down. You were in the Georgia Dome. You're playing a Division One team. We're not supposed to win. I think the predicted score is like 37 to seven. So we're already doing better than that. We're in the game. We know where we are. We've been to this point many times this season, last season, you know, in most of our careers. We know how to, we can come back from a one touchdown game. So, I mean, it was, it was pretty exciting, I guess. I mean, you'd like to be up, but being down by seven to a team that's supposed to beat you pretty handily and everything, you know, it's pretty nice. Um, everybody was still pretty much like ready to play. It wasn't like we knew we was down bad, down by a lot. Um, we pretty much knew that we could come back. Just like a team we come we come from behind, that's the type of team we was. We're a second half team, so we knew that we were gonna be able to play better in the second half. And, um, nobody argued, nobody pointed fingers. We knew that we could win the game. Back at the Georgia Dome, Dave Bernhardt along with Dave Laquetta. Glad you could join us here on our game of the week. Game of the year, game of the history for St. Francis here in the Georgia Dome in Atlanta, Georgia. Dave Bernhardt, Dave Laquetta with you here. Saints trail Georgia State by a score of 17 to 10. The Saints getting their points on a 24-yard field goal by Sean Murray, 45 seconds into the second quarter. Then Des Page, a 58-yard catch and run from E.J. White. In the third quarter, the USF offense couldn't seem to get things going. They managed to lead one drive deep into Georgia State territory, but it resulted in a missed field goal attempt. Meanwhile, Georgia State managed to score a touchdown toward the end of the quarter, increasing its lead to 14. Hill takes a high snap, pulls it down. Now he's gonna run around the right side. He's to the five, he's in, touchdown. Leaps over the goal line. And with that, Georgia State takes a 23 to 10 lead. But the Saints weren't about to give up. 
Early in the fourth quarter, Anthony Hubert breaks loose for a big run. Up the middle, big hole for Hubert. It's the to go. To the outside, Anthony Hubert. Nobody's going to catch him. Touchdown, Saints. 42-yard touchdown run for Anthony Hubert. The Saints are back in it. With 12-14 to play, they trail by eight. Shortly after the Saints get within seven points, Georgia State threatens again. Ball in the right hash. Snap is back, the ball is down, the kick is up, and it is good. 5.05 to play. Ehas field goal stretches the lead to 10. It's Georgia State 27, University of St. Francis 17. Down by 10 with just over five minutes left to play. The Saints need to score quickly if they want to remain in the game. No, play action. White, back of the end zone. Oh! Down. Well, you gotta get the call. No, I've never seen this. The officials have not indicated touchdown. There it is. It was Gunderson with the catch. He was up in the air. He made the fingertip catch, was driven out of the end zone. Touchdown Saints with 124 left. Right now, the St. Francis unit appears as if they will flood that right side. Murray pops it up in the air, and we got it! At the 45-yard line. Murray does a great job on the uh, onside kick. Uh, we, they knew it was coming, and Murray put in a perfect spot, and Drew Tondini absolutely destroyed the guy that was supposed to catch. He knocks him back five yards, Freddie catches it, and then we're in business right there. That was a huge play, and it's something we practice all the time, and it's fun when you practice something, and then it actually <laughs> works the way you practice it, and Murray's as good as I've ever seen at that kick. As time winds down, it's up to the Saints offense to put some points on the board. to the left side. White takes it, sprint out left, throws left. He has to do Allen. Get out of bounds, Elliot. At the time out. 15 yard line out. He needs a timeout with one second left. There's oh. one second left. They get the timeout. <laughs> yeah, definitely was a lot closer. I mean, he was get going upfield. I mean, I I like saying I trust my guys. He's, he's running upfield. I'm like, just go down and get out of bounds. Just go down. But he just kept going. And then, but he got out of bounds in time. I mean, once you looked at the clock, you're like, wow, one second. That's just, that's a little close for me, but. With the offense getting as far as it could, now it was time for freshman kicker Sean Murray and the special teams unit to take over and get the team into overtime. On the sidelines, Murray's teammates join hands and take a knee. As the team takes the line, Georgia State calls a timeout in hopes of icing Murray. I, I was really, I was kind of just pacing, pacing around, just praying to God, you know, getting some faith in me. Um, you know, hoping, hoping that I'll make the kick. I mean, people weren't really saying much. I kind of just like to be left alone, just kind of block out, you know, because, you know, people are going to come up and they're going to say, you know, you can do it, Sean, you know, and I already know that. I just need to give myself some positive, you know, feedback and, you know, I was just kind of pacing back and forth, just so excited for the opportunity that I'm about to have. Gruber the holder. Snap is back. The kick is up. It is. Wide left. Good. Good. He nailed it. 
it. He nailed it. A 31-yard field goal with no time remaining by Sean Murray. And we are going to overtime. The Saints scoring 10 points in the last minute and 24 seconds to force overtime in the Georgia Dome. St. Francis, the defensive unit, is coming out first, so Georgia State will have the ball first. Okay, so they made the choice to go that direction. So Saints defense, now the last time they were on the field was a long time ago, actually, in terms of clock time. The clock shows 0-0-0. Zero, zero, zero. We'll play that way <laughs> until we have a deciding score. Third straight overtime game for Georgia State. NCAA Division I football championship series team. Here we go from the shotgun. Motion to the right side, Wilson. Hill is going to flip it out to Wilson. Wilson needs a block. Wilson is not going to get one. He had one man out there trying to lead the blocking and he only gets two, they'll say he goes out of bounds at the line of scrimmage at the 25, no gain, second down. Second down and 10. Great job that time by Pete Damiani. Georgia State will bring in a couple of tight ends. They'll split two receivers here to the near right side. Danny Williams along with Wilson. Hill, they'll run it here to the left side. Oh yeah, Gavin's in Get the double. Evans back at the 30 yard line, a lots of five. James Bowman tracks him down. Bowman was all over that play. We saw Bowman actually on the first play from scrimmage make a similar tackle. This one five yards back in the backfield and it'll be third and 15 now for Georgia State at the 30 yard line and that almost takes him out of field goal range as well. Four men will go out on this pattern, at least four. Two wideouts left, two right. Ball on the left hash, the 30-yard line. Third down and 15. We're in our first overtime. Hill takes the snap. Looks, looks in the pocket. Get it! Down the middle, tipped up in the air, but it's incomplete. An incomplete pass. Ball will stay at the 30-yard line. It is fourth down and 15. And now Ihas will come on to try a long field goal. Here's a 47-yard field goal attempt coming up by Matt Ehas. Snap is back, the ball is down, the kick is up, a sideways kick, and it is short. It hits the crossbar, it comes down, it's no good. The Saints with a chance here in overtime, and their fans across the way going wild. Well, it, it, it would have had the distance, but it clanked off the right side of the field goal post. And here's an opportunity now for the Saints to stun a Division I AA club in Georgia State. They put the ball right between the hash marks of the 25-yard line. It's first down. High snap to White. He's going to run it. E.J. at the 25 to 20. E.J. down to the 15. He squares it up between the hash marks. That could be enough for the first down. First and 10 at the Georgia State 15. Snap to White. E.J. will keep it again. He Ooh. is hit and dropped a gain of two. It's second down and nine from the 14-yard line. White gives it to Hubert. Anthony up the middle. He's hit, and he is stopped after a short gain to the 13. From the 13-yard line, it's third down and eight. Allen motion to the right side. White takes it. He's looking to throw. Fires into the end zone. It's out of the end zone. They said, forget the field goal. We're going to go get it all. But instead, oh, it's good. fourth down. And it will be a 30-yard field goal attempt coming up. Oh, man. <laughs> like. Just watching the offense go down the field. I was on the sideline, me and a you know, um, couple of the teammates was down in the far part of the sideline, just watching, like, I know we're going to score. That's how we kept saying, we're going to score, we're going to score. I mean, that's something you dream of. I mean, that's the best feeling in the world. I mean, your coach has trust in you. I mean, that's all That's all I need is, is to just know someone trusts me, and I'll put it through. And it's going, stepping out there, you just take a deep breath and just say, let's go, let's do it. And it just feels good. <laughs> and it will be a 30-yard field goal attempt coming up for Sean Murray, who just moments ago kicked a 31-yarder from the left hash. Here's a snap. The placement, the kick, it is up, and it is good! The Saints have come to the Georgia Dome and have defeated Georgia State University in overtime. Hey, 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 I told you we were going to win. We won. We won. Let's go! There we go! We're the top ten champions to be here! You know, 
I, it was, it's one of those where you have so much motion, you know, I'm blocking out so much emotion and then right when I kick it, it feels like all that motion just bursts. I mean, I still, I'm gonna get chills right now. I still get chills just thinking about it. I mean, cause it's just something that as a kicker you dream about. I mean, that's what you live for as a kicker. That's why you play the game is for kicks like that. And for me to have that in such a big game like that and come up so big, I mean, that's just, that's awesome. I mean, I can't, I can't explain it. I mean, it's just the best feeling. Well, you saw everybody jumping up and down. They were all going crazy. They, I think they picked up Murray at one point. They were carrying him off the field or something. So that's just, especially for him, that's a new experience. I bet I don't think he's ever been carried off the field, but maybe. Um, I mean, people are just running out of the crowd. They're going to their family and friends and hugging them and stuff. And it's cool because they're in the Georgia Dome. So they're like doing Lambo leaps kind of deal in, in the Georgia Dome, which is pretty cool. And I mean, I mean, afterwards, going and seeing my family and everything, they were all, my mom always cries after most of the games, so it's nothing new, but she was crying, everybody was all excited. And I mean, it was, it definitely had a little extra feeling to it after the win than a normal game would in the same circumstances, so. While the dome has fallen silent, the celebration is far from over. USF family and friends have gathered outside to congratulate the victorious Saints. I was excited about that. I didn't really realize how many people our program had down there till after the game. Um, just looking up and seeing that we had a lot of family and friends down there. And we have a lot of student athletes from Georgia and Florida, so that was another positive byproduct. Their families got to come up and see them play relatively close. Uh, but after the game, when all the families were waiting out by the buses, was when I was really like, there's a lot of people here. And they all stayed the whole time. They didn't want to leave. You know, I, The players didn't want to leave because that's a feeling you don't get th that often in life. And for those guys to experience that and have their families there was great. Uh, it was exciting. I'm um, actually two hours away from Atlanta, so just to be able to look up there and see my family, my mom, my dad, my brothers, my son, it was the best feeling in the world. And then to get a win and be able to celebrate with them, uh, probably one of the most exciting days of my life. I was very proud of our seniors. I was very proud of our program, actually. Uh, the whole experience for me, it really didn't hit me until the bus ride back because we had a long bus ride and had a, long, a lot of time to think about it. Was you know, seven years ago when, when we came into this program, we, we were having a hard time beating the, the teams in our conference or competing with those teams. Uh, in a seven year span to be able to go and, and beat a division one football team in Atlanta, who's got 65 full ride scholarships and three times the coaching staff and probably 10 times the budget, uh, is a heck of an accomplishment for our football program. It shows you how far our program has came. It shows you what a great job our coaching staff did and our student athletes. I mean, a lot of guys I'm sure would have been beat before they got on the field because of who they were playing. Uh, I think our guys went down there expecting to win and they did it. But to come as far as we've came in the last seven years, that's the, that's the, that to me was the big thing about this game was how far the program has came. If you'd have told me, well, we believed it was happened, but if you'd have told some of the people who had been around here uh, seven years ago that we'd go down there and beat Georgia State, I think they'd have laughed at you. I think it definitely propel, propelled us on a more national uh, stage. I think a lot of people had doubts about St. Francis and about who we are as a football program. They knew we had, you know, had beaten up on some teams, had a lot of wins, but I don't think they really knew we were here, you know, for real. And I think that win versus Georgia State kind of put us and said, hey, St. Francis, you know, they got a legit team over there. And I think that's great. And coming forward the next three years that I got here, I think that's, you know, it's going to really show. So. Um. I mean, person for person, player for player, they were, they were bigger than us. Um, most of them faster than us, stronger than us. But one thing I think that we had, we was just, we were more willing to win than they were. They thought that we were gonna come in and they were just gonna be bigger and stronger than us and, and they were just gonna run over us, but we had the will to win. And I mean, nothing could take away from that. Celebration was fun. It was fun to see our guys with their families, as you already uh, alluded to, them getting up in the stands and singing the fight song and then going to the locker room. And 
it was just a, it was a great, great weekend for our football program. You know, win, lose, or draw, the trip, uh, everything that went with it was exciting for our program. Our coaches, our managers, our, our trainers. Then to win the game was, was icing on the cake, and it made the bus ride home a lot easier. It was a good experience, man. It was, it was a great time. Something I'll remember the rest of my whole life. So. Here we go. Ball spotted at the 20. Here's a snap. The placement. The kick. It is up. And it is good. The Saints have come to the Georgia Dome and have defeated Georgia State University in overtime. St. Francis 30, Georgia State 27. Can you believe it? And look at the picture on the big screen right now. Sean Murray being held up by the rest of his teammates right at the 35-yard line. Saints win 30 <laughs> to 27. Nice to see you guys. Glad you guys came with us today. Um, it's going to be a great matchup between the University of St. Francis Saints and um, the Georgia State Panthers, Panthers, yes, sorry, Cougars. forgot the Cougars. Panthers. But um, it's going to be a great matchup. Coach Hugh, Craig Hartman to my uh, left. It's going to be a great matchup. They've been talking about this on and on all week. Um, what are you thinking about the game, Jeff? I don't have uh, a... Like we, we got a strong matchup going here. Got a strong matchup? Yeah, it's, it's great information from a great guy. Ricky Highland um, has problems with his knees every once in a while. <laughs> Fakes injuries once in a while. It's no big deal. But Ricky Highland, what do you think about the game? It's going to be a good game. I think we're going to come out on top. All right. Um, oh, okay. Answer, Timmy. Right. Timmy Platt. Um, he's injured today. Um, not going to be on the field, but um, he's going to be with us cheering on the fans. Um, Timmy, what do you think about the game and um, what's going to be going on today? Oh, thanks, Marco. Uh, <laughs> honor to be here. You know what's exciting is is uh, we we have some great great players on offense. Um, EJ White, who's been playing phenomenal all season, and uh, granted. Georgia State has some some great threats on their offense as well. They got a, a stud running back. I'm really excited to see uh, how it plays out today. You got two teams who are uh, offensively large threats, and um, defensively, I'm kind of excited to see uh, how they put up with these both, both sides. Uh, you can expect two high-scoring games. Of course, my prediction: St. Francis 126, <laughs> Georgia State 12. Great prediction from a great man. Um, the one thing I'm worried about in today's game is um, Joe Curry. His head is actually really shaved, and he got a fresh shave on it. And the reflection on the quarterback's eyes is going to be unreal. So I'm really, really how that's going to go. Um, Where it is that he, he, put, he loses how a tiger bomb every morning. Tiger bomb could, could, could be the difference in um, whether we're going to win or lose. Um, for Marco Mendoza and the University of St. Francis, I'm out. <laughs>